Because I'll be there. Hallelujah, I'll be there. <laughs> Friend, this world's getting tough. This world's getting weary. This world's getting hard to live in. But one of these days, it's a hallelujah. One of these days, it's all going to be over. One of these days, Jesus is coming. When he comes, he's going to call us out of here. And forever and ever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. Once from my poor sin sick soul, Christ did every burden roll. Now I walk redeemed and whole, hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way. Walking thus I cannot stray, hand in hand with Jesus. In my night of dark despair, 
Jesus heard and answered prayer. Now I'm walking free as air, hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way. Walking thus I cannot stray, hand in hand with Jesus. From the straight and narrow way, praise the Lord, I cannot stray. For I'm walking every day, hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way. Walking thus I cannot stray. Hand in hand with Jesus. When the stars are backward roll, And his home I shall behold, I will then walk streets of gold, Hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day, Hand in hand along the way. Walking thus I cannot stray, hand in hand with Jesus. Amen. I sin on Calvary. What a day that was, and then what a day that'll be when we'll see him face to face. You know what's the matter? Most people don't believe that today. They don't believe that they're going to one day see Jesus. They don't believe that one day they're going to stand before God because they don't believe in Christ. But listen, friends. I did a little checkup. I didn't like what I found. Lord, help me to follow you. God, help me to follow you. The book of Hebrews chapter number 13. <clears throat> book of Hebrews chapter number 13. Verse number 10. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For we have, for we, for here we have, we know continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Friend, this is not my home. I'm just passing through. This is not the place of my continual dwelling. We live here as men and women. We live here. If we live a long life, we live to be 80, 90 years old on this earth. But friend, we're living in this life to get ready for another life. And that's what people are doing. People that get saved in the grace of God have made their preparation for heaven when Jesus comes back. Amen. And those lost without God are making their preparation to die lost without God and go to hell. Now let me repeat what Jesus has done for you. He left his home in glory. Willingly he left his home in glory. The Old Testament speaks of sacrifices that were made and continually made and continually made for the sins of the people. But God sent his son to fulfill all those sacrifices. God, who knew, God sent his son Jesus who knew no sin to become sin for you and I. And he was born in Bethlehem in a stable. He grew up in Nazareth, a sinless, perfect life. He came to the age and to the time of his ministry, about 30 years old, and he preached the gospel. He told of the saving grace of himself. He told people who he was. He preached of himself as being the king of kings. And yet the people in their disbelief and the people not willing to believe that he who he was who he was, 
crucified him on the cross of Calvary. And as he hung there and bled and died on the cross of Calvary, he did it for you, he did it for me. Now, friends, you think about that. You're a child of God. Let that be well embedded in your heart this morning. He died for you. He suffered for you. He bore my reproach. He bore my sin. He took upon him all that should be mine. He took it on him. Now I don't have to pay the penalty of of death and hell forever. Jesus paid it all, thank God. Jesus paid it all. All, listen, all, all to him I owe. Sin had left its crimson stain. He washed me white as snow. Well, glory to God, I'm clean in him. Amen. Can we not follow on to know the Lord? Should we not follow Jesus? Should we not let him have us and say, God, you did it all for me. God, let me serve you. At least, God, let me serve you and be willing to do what it takes to serve the Lord. If America, if the community, if Gabriel's Creek Baptist Church ever sees real revival, it's going to have to be when we determine in our hearts, God, we're going to follow you. Jesus, we're going to follow you. We're going to give up the worldly things and we're going to follow Jesus. And friend, I'll tell you, The best time I have in my life is when I'm close to the Lord. Amen? When I'm following Him, what does it mean to follow the Lord? What does it mean to follow Him? Well, let me tell you something. You'll follow Jesus, and you'll follow Him along. And sometimes, friend, He'll lead you up on the mountain. Amen? Sometimes He'll lead you where the shouting's good. Sometimes He'll lead you, hallelujah, where glory will fill your soul like He is today. Thank God sometimes He leads you that way. Sometimes it's just a plain path where you might not feel any emotion, where you might not feel anything, but you're following Jesus. Hallelujah. And sometimes, thank God, friends, sometimes he'll lead you down in the darkness of the dungeon. Oh, sometimes he leads you down into the valley. But I want to tell you something, my friend. It's in the valley that it's dark. It's in the valley that it's slow. It's in the valley, but thank God, he restoreth my soul. But every time I get in the valley, thank God, if I'll stay close to him, you know what he'll do? He'll lead me out of that valley. Hallelujah. He'll lead me out of that valley. And you know, friend, I'll rejoice in the Lord. Are you following him? If you are, you've been on the mountaintop. If you are, you've been in the valley. If you are, you've been in that plain path. But I want you to know, friend, there's nothing like following Jesus. Hallelujah. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I wouldn't trade a life in Jesus Christ for all this world's got to offer. It ain't fun sometimes, Brother Max. Sometimes to me, and I wonder, God, why? I wonder, Lord, why? But I know one thing, it's for me. Hallelujah. For what he done for me, can't I follow him? Can I follow him for what he done for me? I prayed this morning, Lord, help me. Lord, help me to live what I preach. And God, help me to get closer than I've ever been before. Help me just to get just as close to you as I can. That the power of God might be on this. You know what I want for this church out of me? I want the power of God. I don't listen. I don't want the fanciest messages in the world. I want the power of God. I, you know, I, I want I want, listen, when you leave here, I want you to say, I want you to, in your heart to know you've been in the presence of a holy God. Amen. I don't care if you think I preach good or not. I just want you to be here and know the presence of a holy God because, listen, that's what will help you. That's what will help me is knowing the power of God. We've lost that in churches. Churches have become formalities. Churches have become places where the conscience is soothed because you went to church. But listen, we ought to be here and thank God. I believe you are today because the presence of God is real. We ought to be here to worship the Lord. Amen. Say everybody say amen. Oh, thank God, friend. I'm glad that he's with me. And I'm glad, Lord, help me to follow you. Listen, if, he, if I go into the valley without the Lord, I'm in trouble. If the dark days come in my life and I'm not close to the Lord, I suffer and I suffer badly. But when I'm with him, he'll put his arm around me and say, it's going to be okay, I'm with you, I'm with you. 
Oh, but friend, today, can't I follow him? Lord, help me to follow you. And you know, I, I began to look at some things, and I began to, I began to think how, Lord, what do I need to do to follow you? God, what do I need to do to follow you more closely? And God said, you got a bad attitude sometimes. <laughs> you see, I got the broom. The broom's what you clean up with. God got the broom out, and he said, you got a, your attitude's bad sometimes. I said, oh, God, help me. God help me not to have a bad attitude. And he got to looking around here. God got to telling me some more things. He got to telling me as I'm sweeping around in the corners of my mind. God got to telling me. Sometimes you say things that ain't nice to people and you hurt them. Oh Lord, don't let me do that. God knowingly or unknowingly, God, don't let me do that. God help me to be, help me to be kind. Help me to listen. The truth of the Word of God may hurt you, but if I'm telling you out of the Word of God and it's out of love, I'm not hurting you. It's the Word of God that's doing its job. God said sometimes, sometimes you say things, your language ain't exactly right. Oh, Lord, don't let me say nothing that cause people to think I'm not saved. No, Lord, don't let me use a word that people might think, well, he's not a Christian. He wouldn't use that word. Man, I talk a lot. Y'all shaking your head, ones I can see of you are, but you do too. Amen? Some people can talk more than others, believe me. But I talk a lot. Lord, don't let me use a by word. Lord, don't let me use a slanderous word. That somebody might say, well, a Christian wouldn't say that. In my preaching, I, I know some. I, I've heard some preachers that once in a while they'll say things. They're you know, they're not really bad, but but Lord, I, I don't know if I'd said that in the pulpit. God, let me don't let me, Lord, don't let me do it. God, help me, Lord. I need your power. I need your strength. God, God, let me let me say words well pleasing in thy sight. Lord, don't let me use by words that take your name in vain. And but I don't mean to. God, don't let me use those words. You know, we talked about that a little bit last Sunday, and I'm not rehashing last Sunday's message, but if it comes along, I'm going to give it to you. Those words that take the place of God, but we don't say God, but we use another word for it. Don't do that. The Lord says, don't do that. Lord, don't let my, let my language. Then, then God gets to digging with that broom. God gets to show me. He gets under the corners. He starts sweeping on the corners. Get by, you listen, you go to asking God to help you. He's going to dig your corners out. He's going to dig into your heart and he's going to dig your corners out. And he's going to tell you other things that's in there that you might be missing. Not only my, sometimes it's simple thought. You say, preacher, I can't control what I think. And a lot of times you can't, but you know what? A lot of times we control our, our thoughts or control by what goes on in our lives. And if simple things are going on in our lives, then simple thoughts are going to come in our heads. And, oh, Lord, help me that you would help me with my simple thoughts that I not have simple thoughts. And God says, don't do simple things. You won't have simple thoughts. And if you don't have simple thoughts, you won't have simple things. So God cleans and God brushes and God strokes inside our hearts and he begins to tell us the things that we do. God said sometimes, sometimes people got superior attitudes. Lord, don't let me please God. All I am, and I'll admit to you today, all I am is a sinner saved by the grace of God. I'm your pastor, but I'm not above you. I'm saved the same way you are. God just called me into the pastor so I could try to help someone, so I could, I could try to preach and, and be a blessing to people. God help me that I not think that I'm superior over everybody else. God just use me to proclaim your word and to preach the word of God to you. You ever seen Christians that, that you know, think they're two steps higher than everybody else? Well, I'm above all of that. No, friend, we're all sinners saved by God's grace. 
Now, as pastor, all I ask for is you respect. That's all I ask for. And heed to the word of God. Lord, help me to follow you. And listen, the message got to me before I'm ever giving it to you. This got to me. God, help me. And understand that all I am is all I am. But I am a sinner saved by God's grace. And I'm going to heaven when I leave this world. Hallelujah. Oh, my friend today, what a blessing to know the Lord. Are you following Him? Can you follow on to serve the Lord? The Bible says we should follow Him and to serve Him. And God gets to dig, digging into your life and digging, digging into your maybe sinful habits. We're habitual people. We are creatures of habit and people are. And if a bad habit forms in you, something you do that's wrong... Might be your language, might be an action. I don't know what it is. I'm not even going to get into all those things. But if there's a habit God deals with you over, and it's a sinful habit, and you want to listen, God said you need to get rid of those bad habits. And God digs down there a little bit. Oh, I see, I see. It. And God shows me. Look at what I swept out of the corner of your heart. It's a bad habit. God help me not to have bad habits. God, help me not to... Listen, you say, well, preacher, I want to follow the Lord. If you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to have to follow His ways. You're going to have to follow what He's doing and what He wants you to do. And He says, God says, you know, if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to deny yourself sinful entertainment. Now, wait a minute, preacher. We don't, we don't have sinful entertainment. Well, <clears throat> entertainment that promotes the world and the worldly ways, you can't, all you can say about it is it's simple entertainment. Well, it don't hurt me, preacher. Listen, I want to tell you something. Some of, the junk I, some of the junk I've seen on TV, there's not much to watch on television no more worth, worth watching. I like Andy Griff. It's about as good as a TV show there is. You know the only one thing negative I've got to say about Andy Griff is when I watch him on TV, the town drunk. Even at that, you've got to, you know, even in, as clean as that show is and as many good family values as it, as it is, it shows the town drunk. Now, I'm not going to say quit watching Andy Griffith because we know what that is. But there's not much. When I see on television, when I see entertainment that promotes homosexuality and that promotes living out of, wed, living out of wedlock and babies being born out of wedlock and people shacking up together, listen, that's, that is ungodly, worldly entertainment. God says you don't need to be watching it. And I ain't in a long time, but God reminded me, you don't need to be watching that stuff. You know why? Because that goes back to your brain. That goes back to your mind. Simple things that you watch that you say, well, I, I, I work in the world and I see all kinds of things. Those things you cannot help. But the things that you can help, amen, to live for the Lord and serve the Lord and to follow Jesus, God's going to have to get out the broom and He's going to have to show you things in your heart that you need to clean up in order to follow Jesus rightly, amen. And guess what? The more things that you follow, the more, the, the more that you follow Jesus, the closer you'll get. The more things you get out of your life, the closer you're going to get to God. And the closer you get to God, amen, the better Christian you will be. The better servant you will be, the closer you get to the Lord. Amen. Oh, my friend, today for what he's done for us, for the day that we'll one day see him, can we not as Christians, can we not go on to follow him? There's something else that I'm going to touch on this morning that affects me just as much as it does you. How many of you in here have, have Facebook accounts? About what I figured about everybody. Except those that's got good sense. And I say that lightly. You know what I found out? God pointed that out to me. I told my wife the other day, I think I'm going to just delete my Facebook account for a while. And my wife says, don't do that. You, you, you know. But I have determined in my heart that I'm not going to spend as much time on that thing as I did. Well, I might spend 30 minutes a day 
45 minutes a day looking at that. God said, you know, that 30, 45 minutes a day, you could be reading my word. And I would put that before God. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I use that for, we use that, this church uses that for, for good. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not at all. But don't let it take over your life. Have you ever noticed the thousands of games that's on Facebook to take up your time? And you don't play them, amen. I like words with friends. Don't we? I like playing words with friends. It challenges my brain, which, believe me, needs challenges. But you know what? If I spend more time with that than I do with the Lord, that's not good for me. I want to follow God. I want to follow Him, and I don't want to do nothing. I, I, I'm at church because I want to be at church. I'm not at church because I'm your pastor. I'm at, I was at church before I ever began to pastor a church. I was at church because I want to be at church. You know why? Because that's part of following God. God's people need to be faithful. God's people need to be faithful on you know, I'd love to see this same number back out to the singing tonight. Amen. I'd love to see this same number back on Wednesday night. Being faithful to God, it's not something you do for God. It's something you do because of what God's done for you. You honor Him with your presence in His house. Amen. Can't we follow Him just a little closer? Is there not a desire down in your soul to follow Jesus? Follow the Lord. Follow Him. Are you following God? I'm through. That ain't nowhere near what I what I had all the things lined up just right to say to you this morning that I believe God. It'll be for another Sunday. Follow Jesus. Follow Him. If I never preach another message to this congregation for any other reason, if God takes me out here today, the last words I ever would want you to remember from me is that preacher said, follow the Lord. Amen. When I leave here from preaching any other Sunday, I want you to remember, follow Jesus. Whatever you do, follow the Lord. That's the only way that we're ever going to see revival is as God's people get close to Him. You can't help from getting stirred up if you get close to the Lord. Listen, when the choir was singing, what a day that will be. I can't help it. Hallelujah. I can't help it from getting close to God when I think about what a day that will be. Amen. Preacher, that didn't do nothing for me. You need to be an altar getting right with God. Amen. If it, if, if, well, if, you, if it don't excite you thinking about what a day it's going to be when you see Jesus, you, your exciter's broke. Your spark plug's missing. Or you're fouled out. One of the two. You need, listen, we need to get excited about serving the Lord and about following Him. God didn't give this message in vain. Everyone stand, every head bowed, no one looking around. I'm not asking you no questions. I'm just asking you if you want to follow the Lord, won't you meet me in this altar?